Ladies and gentlemen, it's to tell the truth. And sitting in for Gary Moore is your host for today, Bill Cullen. What do you mean, Mike? Did you see that? Did you see what just happened? Johnny Olson says four words, and Roger Peterson handed him two dollars. <laughs> what do you mean, host for today? You're trying to tell me something. Thanks a lot, Penny. Thank you all, and welcome to The Tell the Truth. Our first guest today is a rather, well, not rather, a very young lady who did a very grown-up thing. Now, uh, anyway, we'll meet her in a moment as she tries to, to fool you and our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Peggy Cash. Here to lay. Kitty Carlisle. And Gene Rayburn. Last show of the day, and I almost fell over the chair when I sat down. <laughs> Hi, Gene Rayburn. Hello, Bill. I see you have a new suit. Uh, thank you. I mean, you didn't even say you liked it. All you said it was new. You may hate it. Well, I, I'm going to continue wearing it, though. I've watched your work, and I wonder how you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Cure delay. Two seats down there from Gene. Thank you, Cure. It's been a fun week with you. I enjoyed it. It's sometimes on a show like this, we you run, a, run a off like men. This show. You've done a very fine job. Ladies, as usual. All right. If you're all ready, I am ready. Watch this. Let's meet our very young guest. Wait, wait, wait. What is your name, please? My name is Margaret Kleberg. <laughs> Number two. My name is Margaret Kleberg. Number three. My name is Margaret Kleberg. Panel, uh, panel, your job will be to find out which one of these three projecting youngsters is the real Margaret Kleberg. Listen while I, with pleasure, read her story. I, Margaret Kleberg, love to ride a bicycle. I live in New York City, and my mother and I heard about an unusual bicycle tour around the city. We decided to go along on the ride. Now, what made this bike hike so special was that it started at 2.30 in the morning. About 40 people were expected to show up at the meeting place in front of the Plaza Hotel. Surprisingly, more than 350 people on bikes arrived for the tour. All of us rode through the empty streets of Manhattan, winding up on the southern tip of Manhattan Island, where we watched the sunrise over the Brooklyn Bridge. My mother was surprised that I didn't get tired and asked to go home before that. You see, until that, the latest I'd ever stayed up in my life was midnight, last New Year's Eve. Signed, Margaret K. Kleber. Okay, friends, we'll be back for our questioning period right after a few brief, not brief, normal size commercials. You about Three of these charming young ladies claim to be Margaret Kleberg, our bike hike tyke, I'm glad I made that. We'll begin the questioning with our resident cyclist, Kitty Carlisle. Oh, thank you. Gosh, I'm pleased to meet you all. I think it's a wonderful idea. Number one, did you have to train for this tour? No, I had learned to ride a bike in about June or July, and the trip had been in August, and I had not known how to ride the bike. That's amazing, well. goodness. Number two, didn't you ride a bike all your life? No. And you weren't tired a bit? No. Number three, did you bring any food with you? Yes. What did you bring? Some donuts and juice. What kind of juice? Yeah. Orange juice. Where did you put it? Did you have a basket? Yes. Ah, number one, where would you find the most traffic? We really found it when we stopped at, I'd say, uh, Washington's Arch. Oh, I see, down, in the, down, down by Washington Square. Yes. But number two, which side of the street do you ride on when you ride in traffic? Against the traffic or with it? Well, this was very early in the morning. There was hardly any traffic. But in general, number three, when you ride in the street, which side do you ride on? Either side. It doesn't matter? No. Seems to be true. And Now, here is a real 
cyclist. He rides to work on a crazy thing. He always has juice with him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of juice, Jeans? Oh, you know, some of that stuff to give you some energy. Fine, fine. <laughs> All right, you may question away. He's a bike. Well, Bill, you're, I think this is absolutely a marvelous idea, and my hat's off to whoever thought it up, and my feelings are hurt that they didn't invite me. Yeah, Number three, uh, what kind of bike do you ride? A girl's English racer. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> you ride a girl's English, girl's English racer? racer? That's Very right, Bill. Uh, number one, how many miles do you think you covered? I'd say about 10 or so. Yeah. Uh, number three, what kind of bike do you ride? Girls English race. I beg your pardon. You, I, I, be, I meant number two. I'm sorry. The juice oh, again. I ride a Raleigh, a collapsible bike. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you, Jean. And well, Peggy. One, number one, what kind of a bike do you ride? I ride a small, low bike, and it's, it isn't collapsible. It doesn't have speeds or a handbrake or anything. It doesn't have a handbrake? No. Oh, just like my old bike. Number three, what time did you get home? I got home about seven. And number one, how long did you sleep? I slept for about, I'd say, five hours or so. And then did, were you able to sleep the next, when you went to bed the next night, were you able to go right to sleep? Yes. So, and number two, uh, what was it like when the sun came over the Brooklyn Bridge? It was very, very beautiful. And how many did, people were down there with you watching the sun come up over the Brooklyn 350 Bridge? 350 people. That was quite a crowd. <laughs> Pretty crowded there. Care delay. You know, it's funny. I almost went on this ride myself. I oh, you know, great really? bicycle. I, I bike to the theater every day. I haven't taken a cab or a bus or you a train in about two months. Yeah, it's marvelous. Great. I admire you all for doing it, or, or the one that did it. What, uh, number one, uh, something very special was done at the tip of the island. Where and what was it? It was, um, it, uh, we ate breakfast, and they had donuts, fruit, and coffee for the grown-ups. Number two, do you know who was that catered that breakfast? Um, I believe it was the people that the, the people that rented the bikes. I see. Number three, was there a restaurant involved that catered that breakfast? No. Um, what was the, uh, oh, you didn't ride on the, you just saw the sun go over the bridge, so you didn't ride on the bridge. Um, how much time did it take you to go down there? Number two? Oh, I don't know. We started at about 2.30 and it ended about 8. I don't know exactly. Is there any Okay, the bell stops us there. We... To our voting panel, mark your ballots. Vote for number one, number two, and number three. One is cuter than the other. $50 for a wrong vote and $500 if you're all wrong. Hope you make some money over there. Kitty, you were first to vote. Well, I voted for number three. I like the way she rode in on her bike. I like the way she stopped her bike. It seemed to me that she had full control over it, and uh, I think she was the best bike rider. Oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jane? Yeah. Well, I voted for number uh, two, Bill, because uh, she said she learned how to ride her bike in June. That's uh, the reason you voted? That's for. the reason I voted. Is that a good month for learning how to yeah, ride a bike? Yeah, that's right. That's All right, month. Peggy Cass. I voted for number one because I thought that she really kind of uh, thought out her answers. And Pierre Delay. Well, I thought that number two was sort of wise like an owl. She sort of sat back and just listened, and I think she's the bike rider. Okay, time to count up the votes and maybe the money. One for number one, two for number two, one for number three. Will the real Margaret Kleberg please stand up? Thank you. <laughs> you like that stand up? I don't know if you noticed. I don't know if you noticed, but when Margaret stood up, she went down. Did you yeah, notice yeah. that? Someone gave her. Number two, good job for both of you girls. Number two, who are you and what do you do? My name is Kathy Hammer, and I'm a sixth grader in Dalton School. Well done. <laughs> you say in the Girl Scouts. Number three, who are you, ma'am, and what do you do? My name is Heidi Donahue. I'm a fifth grade student at PS41. You all did very well. <laughs> did you? Did you, Margaret, have any trouble keeping up with all those grown-ups on this bike ride? No, they had trouble keeping up with me. That sort of, <laughs> sort of figures. All right, let's go a step further, or a, a revolution further. Who was most tired when it was all over, you or your mother? My mother. <laughs> what was the best part of the whole trip? Um, having breakfast down at the battery. You enjoyed that? Yes. How about the sun coming up? That was fun, too. Yes. 
I want to thank you, Margaret Kleeberg and Imposters. There's juice backstage for playing to tell the truth. Well, our next guest is a motion picture cameraman. Boy, we have some filmy shot. It's great stuff. So, panel, if you'll watch the monitor right over there, we'll take a look at some of his footage. Look at that, huh? That would make me nervous. Going down. Okay, we'll meet our parachuting photographer right after we look at some movies of our own. Grapefruit! Up. And now let's meet our photographer in the sky. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Bill Cole. Number two. My name is Bill Cole. Number three. My name is Bill Cole. All right, here's Bill Cole's airborne affidavit panel. If you listen carefully, I'll read it. I, Bill Cole, am a professional skydiving cameraman. I've made over 500 parachute jumps. I've filmed television commercials while falling through the air at a speed of 125 miles an hour. And at an altitude of over 20,000 feet, I have filmed an airman strapped in an ejection seat. Once I made a jump at 31,000 feet, and that was really memorable. It was 30 degrees below zero when I left the plane, but by the time I hit the ground, it was a balmy 74 above. On one occasion, I jumped from an aircraft at 13,200 feet. Now, the only unusual aspect about that jump was the fact that I jumped without a parachute. What? Another skydiver passed me one while we were both falling. I snapped it on, pulled the ripcord, and by the time the canopy finally opened, I had fallen through the air almost two miles. Signed in a rather shaky hand, Bill Cole. <laughs> May I make an editorial comment? Yes. The real Bill Cole, whoever you are, you're a nut. That's all I have to say, but I love you. We'll start the questioning with a gal who is also uh, a good what? parachute jumper, <laughs> Peggy Cass. Uh, number one. Why did you do such a nutty thing as to jump without a parachute? Well, there'd only been ever one other person who jumped out of an airplane without a parachute. You, you wanted to be one of the first? <laughs> Terrific. Number <laughs> three, how did you put it on the parachute? I thought it was hard to get into a parachute. Oh, not at all. We're, we're quite trained for it. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, what commercials have you made? Uh, just beer and cigarette commercials. What do you, what do, you do? Have a guy falling free with a can of beer in his hand? Uh, no, they, uh, they have it after they land sort of thing. They what? They have the beer after they land. I see. They need it, too. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, uh, what kind of a camera do you use? Uh, we use a 16-millimeter uh, military can uh, ca camera. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Go to car delay. Is it possible, number two, is it possible to slow yourself up? For example, if you wanted the other people you were jumping with to fade in the background, that you could hold yourself higher than they? Uh, very slightly, very, very slightly. slightly, but they, they can go, I can go faster well, that way. Number one, can, is it possible to climb at all, ever, under <laughs> any circumstances? <laughs> no, that's the one thing you can't do. Number three, do you fold your own parachute? Indeed so, yeah. Uh, number two, have you ever been on the Coney Island jump uh, No. Number, th number one, do you, is, have you been on the Coney Island uh, parachute jump? No, I've never been to Coney Island. I've never been to Coney Island. Um, um, how many kinds of uh, jumping shoots are there, number three? Uh, three, basically. Uh, stunt, uh, military, and exhibition. Exhibition, strictly. I see. All right, here's a lady who spends a great deal of her time at Pony Island, Kitty <laughs> Carlisle. Number two, where is the school for amateurs uh, on the eastern seaboard nearest here? Uh, nearest here, I think, is in New Jersey. Flemington, New Jersey, or Lakewood. Uh-huh. But isn't there one somewhere north uh, of north Yes, here? Orange, Massachusetts has one, too. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, is there, this is a question I've always wanted answered, never understood, and I know I won't understand the answer now, but is it true that a feather and a man falls at the same speed? Well, a body attains a maximum velocity, yes, after about 12 seconds. And what is the maximum velocity? Well, 174 feet per second. 
And number three, if you have a heavy camera on your back and therefore you are heavier, would you attain a, a greater speed because you have heavier things on you or do you fall at the same speed? You fall at the same speed after the first eight seconds and uh, the camera is not on the back, it's mounted on the helmet. Doesn't matter what, what you're wearing, it's the same speed. Same speed. Uh, no Thank you, Kitty, that old bombardier. <laughs> Gene Rayburn. Yes, uh, number three, what is terminal velocity? Terminal velocity is the uh, altitude uh, loss over a period of a certain amount of seconds. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, what does the phrase two degrees centigrade per thousand feet mean to you? That would be somebody's guess at the change in temperature while they're going up or coming down, depending on which way the change was going. Thank you, number. Number one, what's a pedo tube? I have no idea. I don't either. I was just trying to find out what a pedo tube was. I hear people talking about them around airplanes all the time. Number two, how many shoots do you normally wear when you jump? Uh, well, I've jumped without any. I've jumped with one. I've jumped with two. Most of the time with two. Yeah. There you are. You don't know what a pedo tube is, huh? <laughs> yes, I, I bet you do. OK, mark your ballots and vote for number one. Number two for number three. $50 for each wrong answer. $500 for a wipeout. Peggy, you question first. You may vote first. Okay, well, I really don't know which one. I like the, I love the black suit on that one, but I, but I voted for two because, <laughs> I don't know, I like his accent. Okay, Kerr Delay. Well, I thought number two again sounded most authoritative, and uh, somehow he looks like a sky jumper. So I voted for number three because of the way he answered <laughs> Gene's question. Now, Kitty, I know you're an expert on this subject. Who did you vote for? Well, Why? I voted for number one. Ah. And I hope, number one, you won't take offense. You're a very handsome young man, but you look like the craziest of the three. <laughs> very good reasoning under the circumstances, Kitty. Now, did you write with your pedo tube what your vote was? Well, a pedo tube, is, as you know, is a flyer bill, is a thing that hangs down and the air goes in there and it'll give you some indication of uh, what the temperature is or how fast you're you going or whatever. You hope it doesn't jam up and get stuck. That's right. Yes. And number one didn't know that, so I didn't vote for him. Number three gave me a totally incorrect answer on terminal velocity. Really? I yeah. Know. So that's why, that's why I voted for number two, because he knew that two de the air cools at the rate of two degrees centigrade per thousand every feet of a thousand. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't about. think you do that. Right. Right. <laughs> really, you handle that like an expert. Yeah. Watch. We got one for one, two for two, and one for three. Will the real Bill Cole please stand up? <laughs> Actually, those fellows really did well. Number one, sir, would you tell us who you are and what you do? My name is Duke, and I own an English pub on 2nd Avenue and 85th Street called Drake's Drum. You don't have to know about a pedo too. Yeah. Get it. Number three, sir, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Wayne Ferguson, and I raise St. Bernard dogs in Colonia, New Jersey. <laughs> Well, Bill, I guess a lot of people ask you this question. We then assume a lot of people want to know the answer. How close to death have you come? Well, I've had the reserve chute open as low as 300 feet. Ouch. Uh, I've had a malfunction on the main and cut away the main and opened my reserve, pulled the ripcord on the reserve, and nothing came out. I had to pull it out my hand, uh, oh, and that would open fairly low, too. And reserve, you're already down to my last hand. resort, I'm aren't you? Yeah. What's your next project, Bill? Well, we got a high altitude jump coming up in November, about 40,000 feet. We've involved NASA in it. Uh, they're very interested in it. Okay, now we've heard a lot about Bill Cole's exploits. Let's watch some more of him in action for just a moment. On film, that is. Bill, if you'd tell us what's going on, we'll roll the film right now. It'll be over there. All right, this is where I've jumped out of the aircraft first. Uh, looking back, this is a Canadian aircraft where, up where I'm from. Uh, this is a chap here doing 120 miles an hour in what we call a frog position. Uh, he's going to try and maneuver in to do a hookup with the girl in the white jumpsuit there. And uh, he's tipping his hands down here, and that pulls him forward about 25 miles an hour. Now, there's the three of them. This is out of a Cessna 180. All three, uh, four of us jumped out of a Cessna 180. And I come in and did a hookup with this girl in the white jumpsuit. It's the first time anybody ever made contact with her in freefall. 
and I grabbed her by the leg and then turned her around and faced into the camera. Uh -huh. uh, you see my hand coming in here trying to grapple for her left hand. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of a film that I, uh, I produced and, and filmed called The Silent Sky, which uh, is available now in the States and Canada both. Here's a uh, jumper, rather, uh, lining up his uh, exit point with the pilot, and there he goes from the aircraft. Now, after 12 seconds, he is reaching the terminal velocity that Gene was uh, mentioned, and uh, that's 174 feet a second or 120 miles an hour. Now, he can go faster. He can go to what we call a nosedive position and go well over 200 miles an hour. And, of course, the higher you go, if you get up into the uh, trop uh, troposphere, uh, you can even get up probably over 300 miles an hour. Great shots. Here's a couple of jumpers hooking up here. Uh, it shows that they can maneuver in quite well. Uh, of course, if you could, I would never have been able to get the shoot off the other guy either. And I grabbed this guy by the leg and rolled him here, and I got grounded for uh, three weeks for doing it because I was open pretty low by that time. <laughs> but I've, I've been grounded for life now from the national organization uh, in Canada for doing the shootless jump. Very good. Very, uh, very good footage. Very, very. Now, how can you breathe at 300 miles an hour? It breathes just like you do on the ground. As, it... You see, uh, most people compare it to sticking their head out the window of a car into the slipstream and the turbulence. Well, you're not doing that up there. There is no turbulence. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And imposters for playing to tell the truth. <laughs> Get ready to play. Hi, I'm Marianne Coran. I know you get the Final Jeopardy questions correct when you play at home. Now Game Show Network is inviting you to play Final Jeopardy. Here's how it works. Watch Jeopardy at its regular time and channel. Then watch Game Show Network. Every night, I'll present a Final Jeopardy question. Using your touch-tone phone, you'll have a chance to play Final Jeopardy at home. Get it right, win a prize. Catch Final Jeopardy right after the 9 p.m. Eastern match game weekdays on Game Show Network. In the beginning, it's sort of nice changing your baby's diaper. In addition to the cash awards, the central characters on today's show will receive a fabulous ring in 14 karat gold set with a Lindy Star Sapphire weighing over three carats. One of eight glowing fashion colors available in Lindy Stars. Promotional consideration provided by American Airlines. Traveling on business or traveling for fun, it's good to know you're on American Airlines. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.